G'day, welcome back to part two of my milling machine build. Uh, if you missed part one, you can see it up there now, there's a link. I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. So let's not mess around with this, let's uh, wander over there and we'll see what I've been up to. Alrighty, so off camera I uh, gave this a coat of paint and uh, I tarted this up which was an off cut from the last micrometer wheel I made and bolted that on there and I'm using this handle with the fold down grip so we're not sticking out here too far so that's all uh, that's all set up in there now and the next we'll move on to the next part so the next part will be to to prepare this column I'm gonna have to face it off to get it flat because it's not flat it's got a bit of a curve in it I've cut up these two braces here which will get welded into the back to stiffen everything up and I've also need to machine a, uh, a slot in here for a linkage to the nut on the lead screw so we'll get on with that shall we alrighty so uh, what I've done is I've cut up some plates threaded the M8 to make use of these two slots that I put into this to uh, ex expressly for bolting this on to uh, to machine it when the time comes so we'll go back around the other side and we'll fire it up see so how we go alrighty so this is the tool I was trying to make back when I was crook and I was building this uh, this milling attachment and I received the wrong tap so I've, I've received the right taps and I've made this up so I'm gonna give it a whirl see how we go let's go didn't do much that pass other than remove a bit of paint so uh, let me have a go well it's thrown a lot of hot chips all over the place but you're getting the general idea I'm missing a bit here in the middle we'll get that and we move it up bring it back later well viewers I'm a bit disappointed that's a bit of a bloody disaster that is uh, didn't cut well at all there's some nice finishes in places, but uh, it's been all over the place. So as a result of that, what I've decided to do is uh, I've ordered a plate this morning. It's just a little wider than that and uh, 3 8 10 mil thick. And I'm going to plate 500 mil of it. Uh, part of the reason I'm going to do that is, you can see that or not, it's become a little thin just here and I'm a little worried that... Uh, once I cut a big slot down the centre of this, it's going to become a bit too uh, weak because these have got to get bolted down the sides to create the rails. And you can see with this one, it's got a high spot just here. This one's uh, I've been into it with the grinder and it's not too bad now. We'll sort that out with the uh, with the flat plate. Uh, that plate will take a couple of days, two or three days maybe. But uh, oh, by the way. I said during the, the uh, machining that it was throwing bits everywhere. This is this is what was coming off uh, off the lathe while I was cutting that. And oh my god, it just it was the full width of this front of this house. It's just everywhere. What a mess! It took forever to clean it up yesterday afternoon, and I've cut a bit more of it this morning, so I've had to go through and clean it all up again. But anyway, get on with it. I thought I'd, uh, I'd knock this slot in here, it's just a hole saw each end, cut it out with the, uh, with the angle grinder. But I've made it a little wider than it needs to be, uh, with the thought that when I put the plate on, I'll cut it about 20mm or there about something, that's 28mm. So that when I flip it over, I'll be able to tack weld it in places around here to make it a little more solid. And uh, not have to really get into it too much, because I don't want to weld it much, because I, I don't want it warping. That piece of flat steel just arrived. The nearing pull up. It's amazing. Uh, three deliveries today, two different companies, but three different drivers. And they're all going to arrive within about 10 minutes of each other.
Beautiful. Job well done. All right, viewers, check this out. Here's my plate just arrived. This thing is a linear rail and a bearing like it's supposed to be. And it was like, I bought it because it was so bloody cheap I couldn't resist. It was 174 baht or something, just, you know, about, it's at about seven Australian dollars and probably about five US dollars. But look at the way this thing's packaged. Look at that. Unbelievable. And there's a strip of timber on there too, and easy. No. But it's wrapped in this stuff. It'll take me half an hour to unpackage it. Oh, there's no berry. That'd be right. Just another one of those things where it was hard to tell what you were getting. Eh? No, there it is. There's the berry. Wrapped up separately. Ah, oh, just about need to be a surgeon to get this thing apart. There it is. Good old rail. So this. Oh well. I'll find a use for that somewhere along the line. For seven bucks. Good beauty. Alrighty, so uh, I'll get the hole saw out, cut the holes in there, cut it out with the uh, angle grinder. Well, as you can see, putting these two different size slots in here has allowed me somewhere here to put a bit of weld in there to join these together. But it's getting a bit late in the day, so that's a job for tomorrow. Well, there we have it, viewers. Uh, shopping day today, so I got in this morning before we left to go shopping and tacked it all up inside here, and tacked them down along the edges, and I've welded a plate on this end uh, for mounting up a bearing. I've also bought some more uh, thrust bearings so there'll be a thrust bearing in here just below this uh, so that's now ready to mount the strips on the sides uh, i was going to uh, bevel the edges of, of these bars but there was so much drama doing it for uh, for that little vice that i decided i couldn't be bothered i'm going to do it the same way i'm going to make this up the same way that I made the cross slides on the lathe, which is, uh, well, I'll show you what I do when I do it. But that's it. That's all ready to go now. And luckily, it, it, it was almost zero warpage when I welded it up. But nice and solid. It's got an awful lot heavy all of a sudden, but there it is. Alrighty. So I thought I'd uh, try and explain what I'm going to do here now, rather than while I'm trying to do it. Uh, so this is the way I'm going to set it up. So rather than having dovetails in here, originally I was going to try and cut a dovetail in this piece so that the outer piece was mated originally to this anyway and would run up and down it. But I just think, I don't think it's strong enough for what I really want to do. So this will be the top plate. That's, these are obviously, a lot of these are just off cuts and scraps. So it'll have a 15 or 20 mil plate on the top here, depends what I've got and what I get my hands on. These two bars here will be bolted to that. This little bit of half inch square will be bolted through the top here. And this one will be bolted up through the bottom. The opposite side over here will have uh, a brass gib in it and adjusting screws. 
So that's the way uh, I'm going to go about it. So all three pieces here will slide up and down this rail here. That like that. So that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, it's exactly how I did the cross slides on the lathe. Well viewers, recent times I've been having a bit of trouble sleeping, or at least getting to sleep at night, and then keep staying asleep. But while I was lying in bed last night, I started thinking about just how heavy the whole milling head part of this is going to be. And looking at this, this is actually upside down. Uh, so this would be the top plate, and these are the rails bolted to the pillar. I'm actually going to run three that gives in, partly because I'm a little worried about running steel on steel and having it gall at some stage, and partly because it will give me much, much, much more adjustability to get any slack out of it that I might have. This would be set up, this would be the setup for the left hand side, and over on the right hand side, it'll get another gib in here. So uh, I'll have adjustment from here and from here on one side, and the other side I'll just have adjustment in here. So that's what I'm going to do, um, it's just a little innovative but I've got everything I need here to do. I've gone from uh, a half inch here to 5 eighths because you've got, this is, uh, that's half inch and an eighth gives you 5 eighths. So that's where I'm going to go. Well viewers, there you have it. Uh, I've spent a bit of time this morning uh, cleaning everything up, getting all the paint and rust and uh, mill scale off everything. Uh, here's one of these. If you haven't seen the little video that I made removing mill scale one of these you can see it up top at the moment i'll put a link up there they are fantastic all right so what i'm going to do is uh i want to dress a few things up with a bit of sandpaper before i start going further but i'm going to tack this one line it all up tack it on the ends both ends and then drill it in situ and we'll get screwed through into here with some uh countersunk cap heads so that this can run over the top of it. This lot, I said originally I was going to bolt top on the top and the bottom, but I bought some uh, longer cap heads and they will just go all the way through in there, like that. And then I'll put some uh, put some five mil cap heads, which will go through from the bottom here with a lock nut, so I can adjust this gib here. The other side will get exactly the same treatment, with uh, the exception that we'll get a gib in here as well. So. There we go. Uh, when I'm done, I'll put it in the lathe and I'll mill off. Well, I might even just cut the worst off with the angle grinder first and then mill the sides flat to make sure they all look nice and everything's nice and square. So I'll get on with that.
Well viewers, minor disaster. Now if you've been enjoying this video up till uh, this point, how about giving it a great big thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't done yet. Because then you won't miss much. Well, it's been a short week this week and it's Friday already. I uh, only had five days this week because I didn't finish last week's video until Sunday instead of normally on a Friday. And I had one day where I had no power, so that's just made it an even shorter week. But this is where this week's video is going to end because I just broke this bloody tap uh, in that hole there. Only had two more to go. And I just, I'm, I kept thinking to myself the whole time this tap's blunt and I should go inside when I'm finished doing this and order a new one. But I'll definitely have to go and order a new one now. But anyway, so it's coming along nicely. Um, I've got the uh, carriage put together, but it needs to be drilled and tapped and bolted and everything as well. So make sure you come back next week and, uh, and check out the next chapter in this mill build. Thanks for watching.